Are you looking for a highlighting system for your Bible? Well, stick around. I'm going to share mine with you. I know when I started highlighting my Bible about four years ago, I really didn't want to make a mistake and I deliberated a lot about what to do because I didn't want to have to, you know, redo it and live with a bad decision. <laughs> so I want to take that fear away from you and share my system with you, which has been working really well. Hi, my name is Nancy B. Klein and this is His Ancient Ways. And on this channel, I share tips on how to study the Bible, read the Bible, how to do Christian journaling so that you can find His good way for your life. When I decided four years ago that I wanted to start highlighting my Bible, I did what you're probably doing right now. I started scouring the internet looking for ideas. I watched a ton of videos. I went to Pinterest and I found one video after an entire weekend of binging YouTube because I love YouTube, obviously, because I'm on YouTube. And I found this awesome video, short little video. And you know what? I've looked and looked and looked to try and share it with you and I can't find it again. I'm sorry <laughs> because I would share it because it's just really good. But anyway, it was this young lady and she just shared how she did something that I think she said her grandmother did. And it was just a three, you know, three color system, really, really simple. And I'll go ahead and tell you what it is, but I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into it a little bit later in the video. And this video isn't going to be very long, by the way, so stick around. <laughs> and I will share my colors too um, at the end of the video. But her simple system, three colors, was the commandments or directives of God, warnings of God, and then the third one was promises of God. And she had been doing that. And I loved those three um, you know, those three things that she was highlighting. It really, really made sense to me. Now, the reason why it made sense to me is at the time I had just um, switched churches and um, had a new pastor and he was talking a lot about an acronym for Bible, B-I-B-L-E. And that was basic instructions before leaving earth. And I loved that because the Bible is, the Bible is our user manual. And so what I loved about the three choices that this young lady shared was that these were like very impactful things that, you know, she could you know take to the bank basically like, yes, you know, this is how you're commanding me to live. This is what you're warning me about. And this is what you're promising me. And so I thought it was fantastic. So I ran with that and I did add a couple of more things to it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I like to do is what Nikki Drake on Crazy Simple Truth teaches, and that is to look for God first in the passage. Now, some people do this just by looking for God or Lord or Holy Spirit or Jesus, and that's what they highlight it. Some people go a little bit deeper than that, and they look for the names of God, like Jehovah. Um, and then some people go a little bit deeper than that, and this is what I do, is I actually look for God's attributes, his character characteristics, and anything that he actually does. So it's a very broad category, but I like it because it helps me to learn who God is. So to me, it's not just about finding God in the passage. It's finding who he is in the passage. So I added on, that's one of the colors that I added on was the characteristic and the characteristics and the attributes of God. Now let's go ahead and get into the three that I talked about already. And so the first one would be a command or a directive. And yeah, so this is, you know, pr pretty simple. Anything that you feel like he's telling you, um, you know, like to have faith or, you know, uh, be strengthened or, or whatever, whatever you think that he's telling you, I highlight that as a command or a directive for me. Now, the next one is warnings. And some people, I think, have one called sin. And my warnings are oftentimes attached to sin. So, for instance, I kind of want to clarify this because, like, let's say, for instance, I read, like in Joshua, where he says, you know, do not fear, uh, take courage, be courageous, you know, do not fear, be courageous. Now, you could think that do not fear could be a warning. But in this instance, it's kind of more like a directive. But at, in, in other places, you know, in the passage, it would say like, you know, um, God judged these people because they knew him not 
or whatever. And so the warning there, that's a warning because they, they were a sinful people because they didn't know him or they didn't pursue him. So, um, you know, when you're going through these highlighting systems, sometimes there's some little nuances and just like how you feel, there's no right or wrong way. It's just how you feel at the time when you're reading it. So warnings and directives can get um, a little confusing, <laughs> but if you, you know, just stick with warnings kind of being more sin based, um, then it makes it a little bit more clear. Now, the next one is promises. And I think it's super important to just hold on to those promises that God gave us because many of them we won't see on this side of eternity. We have to wait <laughs> to see those. And so I think it's really important to hold on to the promises because if you don't, um, then it's kind of a little bit of a slippery slope and you can get into unbelief and we don't want that. <laughs> don't want that. So promises are super important to hold on to. Now, the last one, um, actually is relatively new. I kind of played around with some different things, which makes it fun when I go back and I find the, the that color, it's actually, um, the color purple. And so sometimes I'll find the color purple and it'll be something else. <laughs> so I just have, have to use a little discernment when I come across it again. But I finally landed on my color purple. And for me, that is identity. And I think identity is super, super important because it's part of being able to renew your mind. If you can't get it in your mind and your spirit and your heart about who you are, it's really hard it's really hard to renew your mind. Um, and we are called to renew our mind. Paul said that. So I think identity is super important. And the last one is just an all purpose general color that I use. If I just want to highlight something interesting, but it doesn't fall into any of those categories. And sometimes I just use a colored pen for that as well. Okay. Now, before I get into the colors that I use, I do want to say, I'm going to be doing a part two on this where, um, I'm just going to open up my Bible and we're going to do some passages <laughs> and you can just kind of see how I work through this. And I'll also give you some tips on like what to do when it's like a passage kind of like falls into like multiple things, you know, um, or like if you highlight one color and then you read it again and you realize, you know what, this is a little bit more nuanced and I want to add another color to it. Like how do you layer colors in the Bible? It's like kind of complicated. <laughs> so I'm going to go over that in part two as well. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss part two. Okay. So now let's get into my colors. I do have a little bit of a rhyme or reason. Um, I'm not stuck in them. Really any color that just kind of makes sense to you is, is totally fine. But I know a lot of people are like, well, what do you use? Now, first of all, I use these Mr. Pin um, gel highlighters. They're like kind of like a waxy crayon. Um, they'll, I'll show you in part two. They, they're okay. Um, I think over time they tend to bleed a little bit more. They don't really bleed. They kind of shadow and they kind of shadow more and more over time. But for the most part, if I don't use a really heavy hand, I'm pretty cool um, with the amount of shadowing there is. But anyway, this is my colors that I use. Blue is what I use for the attributes of God. Um, I think the only reason why is because um, within biblical dream interpretation, blue is often a color of communion with God. So that's why I chose that. Now, red, um, some people you like to use red for sin. Some people like to use red for, you know, anything with Jesus or being covered with the blood. I actually, when I lay this down on paper, it actually doesn't look red. It actually looks pink. And most reds are going to look pink probably with the gel highlighters. And so to me, pink is the color of love. And so I use this for commandments and directives because God loves me. And so he's telling me what to do. And so that's kind of like my weird reasoning as to why I use that for why I use this color for, um, for commandments and directives. The next one is orange and this orange, um, with the, uh, Mr. Pen actually does look pretty orangey, um, on paper. I had a previous orange, they were Sharpie gels, which by the way, I don't recommend Sharpie gels at all. They shadow really, really bad. Um, over time, but um, that orange just looked yellow. So this actually looks yellow or looks orange rather. Um, anyway, this is what I use for warnings because orange kind of reminds me of like road construction and stuff like that. So 
I use this for warnings. So my next one is green and I use that for promises. Um, promises to me is just kind of like a color of provision and God does promise, uh, you know, provision. And I'm not necessarily talking about monetary, just like any kind of provision, you know, don't worry about you know, like, you know, he will provide for you. And so that's kind of why I use green. The purple one I use for identity because, you know, I am a princess. I am a daughter of, of God. You know, I am part of his royal family now and purple is the color of royalty. So, you know, purple is identity. And my last one is yellow and yellow is my all purpose um, one. Now, the only issue that I have with the Mr. Pen and the yellow is when I do it side by side with the green, they actually look pretty similar. So it's kind of strange um, because the green looks green on its own but it looks yellow when it's by the yellow. <laughs> so I'm not too sure why that is, but um, yeah, yellow is just my all purpose color. And like I said, when I need something just like all purpose, sometimes I'll just use a colored pen. Now, if you're looking for different ways to take Bible notes, I have a free gift for you. It's down in the description. If you're on your phone, you would just hit like the little more thing in order to find it, but just dig down in there be below the video and you'll find it in the description. It's 35 different ways to take easy Bible notes. It's super easy. You can just print out one of the pages and tuck it right into your Bible and it'll really, really help just dig into the Bible and it'll just really help with your engagement. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to watch for part two and also make sure to check out these videos over here if you would like more tips on how to read the Bible.